Good morning. Today is the... I actually don't know what day it is today. Today is some date in uh, January. I think it's the 8th of January. And I am headed to work, kind of. Well, yeah, it's work. I'm uh, running um, support for a Frank Kern implementation, which is super exciting. I've done this once before, and uh, I think it's going to be fun. Anyway, uh, really, I kind of jumped in as though you knew what was going on. Yeah. I think what I'm going to start doing is I'll be, I'll be traveling a little bit more, commuting a little bit more, and um, I want to use my commute time to make a, a video log. Or a, or a vlog, if you will. Just talk about random stuff, um, and I think it would be really cool at some point to turn this into like a live stream thing that I can do and just basically stream in the morning while I'm commuting. So if you're commuting at the same time, you can listen to me ramble about stupid stuff. Um, and I guess either way, you can listen to me ramble the next day. <laughs> or whatever. Um, anyway. Uh, I'm excited today to go. Um, I always like interacting with people. It's fun kind of after the holidays to get back to it. Um, but I'm excited to go and work with these people. Last time we did this, it was a lot of fun because it was, Frank's customers are awesome. They're like some of the best customers that there are. Um, they're just chill people and they're cool and Frank's a cool guy and, uh, and I'm, I'm excited with the people that I'm working with and I think it's fun. So. Um, so yeah, I think it'll be fun. Um, I also wanted to talk for a second about, um, well, I, so I shaved recently. I used to have a, a beard. I won't say that I was proud of my beard because, um, I'm not like a facial hair guy, meaning I don't grow good facial hair. Is that the right way to say it? I don't grow, I don't grow facial hair. Well, no, I don't grow good. The facial hair that I grow is not good. That's, that's what we're trying to get at. Um, I was kind of proud of my, like my chin. I think my chin grows pretty well, but that's it. My chin grows like a, if, if every, if the rest of my face grew like my chin did, then I could have a nice thick, it would be scraggly and mountain managed, but just a nice thick, like, <clears throat> you know, but it doesn't, I get, get patchy and my mustache doesn't connect and it's, it gets weird. And so I have to like trim it to make it look like it's not, I don't look like I'm homeless. Anyway, it's this whole, it's this whole thing. Anyway, so I shaved recently, and the reason why I shaved is not because it looked bad, because I kind of was reveling in the fact that it looked bad. In fact, I shaved because um, because I was going to trim it up with a, a electric shaver, and I my hand, I don't know why I'm doing this, I wasn't like I was shaving, but well, I guess this is the sign for shave, but uh, my hand wasn't as steady as I wanted it to be, and so I cut too far in. And so now I have this like thin patch. Actually, it was on this side. This thin patch on this side. So I was like, ah, I can't just leave that. That's way obvious. And it may not have been actually that obvious. I was in the bathroom by myself. So, you know, you always psych yourself out more when you're by yourself. Anyway, so, so I tried to kind of even it out on the other side, and that made it look worse. And so then I tried to trim it down to where it was like just a little bit of scruff on the sides, but then the mustache and the chin was still there. No good. So I tried to trim the, the mustache up so it didn't look so stark, but leave the chin. That also didn't work, so I was like, ah, forget it. I need to just get rid of this thing. But here's the beauty of it. So I shaved my face, and afterwards, so I, I was, um, I started training Muay Thai at about the same time that I started growing the beard, a couple, two or two and a half months ago. So the beard had gotten fairly big, and I had gotten, I mean, I'm not, I'm not good. I wouldn't even put myself into the good category. I'm like two or three rungs below good. It at Muay Thai, but I'm having fun, a lot of fun, and, and I'm actually, you know, I'm losing weight, and I'm gaining muscle, and like it's, well, I shouldn't say losing weight, I'm thinning up, but I'm getting more lean and stronger, which is awesome. Anyway, so when I shaved, because I was, because I was chubbier when I started growing, and I hadn't seen myself without the beard the whole time, I then I shaved, and suddenly I was like, oh, dang, dude, you lost some weight, you're looking good, and then I got my hair cut, and it was even more so. So now, like, I've got, like, my face is thinned out a little. I'm not, I'm not skinny, 
by any means. I got a, a ways to go before I can say that I'm skinny. But you know, my face is thinned out a little bit, so I don't have so much in the cheeks and in the, in the neck, which I'm super excited about. And then when I cut my hair back, it's it's even. So part of the thing with me is I like I like uh, vertical symmetry as well as horizontal symmetry. Meaning, um, I like for my fa I wouldn't like have like oh, that's kind of the reason why I wanted to even it out on this side with the beard. Like I don't want to have something on this side that's not on this side. And part of the thing with my mustache with it not connecting on one side really bothers me. So I'd always just trim up the side that does connect so that it not, so it looks like neither side connects. Um, but uh, but also I have this thing about like my hair, the top of my head and the bottom of my head. It needs to be I don't want to say round, but it just needs to like I don't want there to be like a triangle where I've got this massive hair and this like teeny little chin. I have a big chin though, um, and a small upper lip. Like it's a smaller upper lip, but I have this massive chin. So I also don't like to cut my hair too thin because my head, although it's big. It's like big in the back. It's this weird thing where my chin is wider than the top of my head is. At least that's the way it looks in pictures. Maybe that's because I'm sitting like this when I'm taking pictures. But anyway, um, so so there's that. And uh, oh, I guess I have to. Okay, we're back. Sorry, I had to um, text Naomi that I was here and dropping the dogs off. And so anyway, so so the whole point of that is sometimes uh, the whole thing with the beard was actually kind of to hide my face because I was sick of it being like chubby and, and my neck being super fat and like every time I'd, I'd look at myself in, on a like webcam or with a video, I would um, I'd just be super embarrassed. I just, I'd, sometimes I'd just turn the video off. I'd be like, oh, my video's not working because I didn't want people to see. And I've never really been that self-conscious. Like I'm not like a self-conscious person. Um, I'm kind of the opposite of self-conscious most of the time. But in this instance, for, for this type of thing, it was just like, uh, I don't really want people to... I want that to be the, the face that they associate me with. Me with. Um, and so, anyway, the, 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 that was the reason for the growing of the beard. But then, that was the initial reason. But then, the reason why I stuck with it for so long was, honestly, out of stubbornness, because my wife and my mother-in-law kept telling me to shave it. They said it looked bad. And my sister-in-law and, you know, my my a lot of my in-laws' family, my, my wife's family were kind of giving me, giving me crap about it and dad and you know my whole family's kind of giving crap about it so I was like no I, I if I'm gonna shave this it's not I'm, I'm I refuse to let you be the reason why I shave it like I like it I don't care if you like it this isn't I don't my my grooming habits aren't for you right there here she is well whatever take this off for her real quick hi sweetie did you leave the key in the lockbox for him yes all right, have fun. See ya. I'll, uh, I'll, yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll shoot you, a, I'll let okay, you know where it is. Okay, I'll send you a picture. Okay, come on, baby. And we're going to go that way. Uh, anyway, so, so my point is, sometimes we will talk ourselves so far down this pride hole. That's what I'm going to call it, the pride hole. Um... Which, the pride hole itself, I'm not going to say even that the pride hole is a bad thing. Because I think that there's something about um, finding strength in being stubborn. Like, stubbornness is not bad, I don't think. I, I, I will never... I don't know what that guy was doing, but... I'm never going to say that stubborn, stubbornness is like this inherently bad thing. Because it's not. I think that being stubborn um, for things that you believe in is exactly what you should do. If you believe in something, you don't have to have a... You don't have to have a scientific reason. You don't have to have... You don't have to have any, any reason except your own to believe in something. And you can stubbornly believe whatever you want. If you want to believe that there's a god, if you want to believe that there's a flying spaghetti monster, if you want to believe that there's nothing, what you believe as it relates to somebody else has nothing to... It's, it's totally irrelevant. It's totally arbitrary. Okay? And I don't mean that to be offensive to like people's religious beliefs and say that they just pick something to believe. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is in relation to the person that you're talking to or to everybody else in the world, what you believe in, the, the what is totally arbitrary, okay? Meaning it, it shouldn't matter. If you're a Jew, if you're Jewish, I don't know if I'm allowed to say if you're a Jew. That sounds, somehow that sounds politically incorrect. But anyway, if you're a Jew and I'm a Christian, it, the fact that, that you don't believe in Christ and I do as a Christian that's totally arbitrary. 
okay? What's not arbitrary is, uh, and what shouldn't be arbitrary, and this is the point that I'm making, is, is why and how. Okay, now the individual, again, the, the actual reason why is going to be d different for you and me. The point is there should be a why, and that why should make you stubborn as all get out. Um, because there's, there's, a, there's a reason behind it. A lot of business people talk about, a lot of like the business self-help book writers and stuff, they talk about knowing, in fact, Simon Sinek talks about it a lot. He's huge for this. Start with why, okay? And that's not, that doesn't just apply in business. In life, if you don't know why you do what you do, then you shouldn't do it. There's no reason to, because there's no reason, right? The why is the reason why. So if there's no reason why, then you shouldn't do things. However, on the flip, that's not an excuse um, like to just do whatever you want. That's actually, it actually creates more responsibility for you because not only do you have to, number one, discover why, why do you exist? What do you, why are you doing what you do? Like when you go to work every day, why? Why do you go to work every day? And you might say, oh, well, I have to. You don't have to. Nobody has to do anything, right? Number one, we don't live in a country where we're, where, where, where our, you know, we're under threat of death or threat of gunpoint. But even if we were, you wouldn't have to. You could go do anything that you want. And there'd be consequences, sure, but you, you could do anything you want. So the point is, why do you go to work? And why do you go to work where you go to work? Like, what's the point behind that decision that you made and that decision you continue to make every day? Because one of two things will happen. Either, A, you'll have a reason, and it's a good reason, and it will give you motivation to go every day. Or two, you don't have a reason, and you're going to be pissed at yourself your entire life because you don't know why you're doing what you're doing, and you're spinning your wheels. If you have a dead-end job, and you don't like your dead-end job because it's dead-end, and you want to get ahead, and you have a, a dream in life of something that you want to do, but you refuse to go do it because you can't leave your job, your day job, you're always going to be pining after something that you can't get to because it's over there and you're over here. Whereas if, and that's not even to say that the job itself, you could be in a dead-end job and have a why and be totally okay with it. If your why is, uh, I, I exist, I go to work every day because the, um, because the, uh, the benefits allow me to spend X number of hours each week with my, with my kids and I get enough money and, um, and it's okay. Cause now your attitude completely changes. Okay. In fact, uh, what's his bones? Um, Seth Godin. Every time I think of Seth Godin, I think of Waiting for Godot, which many of you don't have any idea what Waiting for Godot is. And I actually, most most of us, myself included, don't really get Waiting for Godot, but I think that's part of the point. I thought it was one of the most hilarious plays that I ever saw. But it's also a play about nothing, and that's kind of my thing. Anyway, he wrote an entire book called The Oedipus, uh, the, not The Oedipus, The Oh, what was it called? Dang it. Called the... the uh, I forget what it's called. This is really, really bad. But it's a book that the name of the, the title is... It's titled after the Greek, um, the Greek myth of the guy that makes wings out of wax and, and feathers and flies too high and the sun melts the wax and then he drops into the, into the ocean and drowns. His son does that. Anyway, he's going on talking about... His whole point in that book is about how you need to create art, and everything you do should be artistic. And I think part of the, what he's saying in that book, and this is kind of what he's getting at, is the same thing I'm getting at, which is the same thing Simon's getting at, which is the same thing that everybody's getting at, just a different way of thinking about it, is what you do, just like what you believe, and and the like the X, the variable X, which is the, the action itself, has, has nothing, has no, literally no effect on your happiness on your satisfaction with your life, on your ability to advance, on anything, right? The what that you do has nothing to do with it. And I'll, and I'll share a personal experience which helps to illustrate this. I lived in Ukraine for two years, and then I lived in Moscow for four months, uh, about a year and a half later. Um, I met a lot of people in both of those countries that were miserable, just miserable people. Um, their life, they didn't like their life, they wanted everything to change, they were complaining about government and this and that, and admittedly, their life isn't as, I mean, they're not as uh, infrastructurally 
I'll put it that way, infrastructurally well off as maybe some of us are here. Um, the system isn't necessarily gunning for them over there, but these are people that have apartments. These are people that have a job. These are people that have big screen TVs in their in their apartments. They have food in the fridge. They have a fridge. They have heating in the in the winter, and they have uh, they actually don't have AC in the summer. But some of them had like AC units, and you know, sure once a year, you know, during the summer they their their hot water's out for a week, and blah blah blah. All right. So this is uh, exhibit A. Ukrainians, and I'm not saying this is all Ukrainians. I'm just saying I met people in Ukraine that were like this. Exhibit B. Uh, Actually, I jacked up my knee while I was in Ukraine and came back for surgery. And while I was in recovery and doing therapy, my family and I went to Mexico City. And while we were in Mexico, we traveled out to this little village, which out in the middle of Podunk nowhere. And uh, in this little village, these people, um, these people had nothing. This is like little kids um, walking around in the in the dirt streets barefoot with no shirts on. That that's that's the kind of Poor, destitute, just like, like really, really poor. Um, that's what I'm talking about here. Um, I'm about to go into a garage, so if it gets dark, I apologize. But anyway, I. Uh... Oh, these people there, destitute, poor. They got nothing, right? Um, and yet, and yet, somehow, those people were infinitely more happy the kids had smiles on their faces the uh the the parents were happy the, the kids just wanted to play they were talking to us they were having a good time and you could just see all of them they were the old people were talking with each other playing chess playing you know playing cards whatever but they were happy they weren't miserable like these people sitting in their 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 seeming that now in contrast luxury apartments with these big screen tvs and all this stuff um i'm actually gonna get out of the car and walk with you for a second so anyway um so so what's the point like why do i bring this up well if money had anything to do with happiness the ukrainians would be infinitely happier than the than the mexicans and i again the ukrainians those ukrainians that i met and those mexicans that i met right because they had more money they had a lot more money infinitely more money in fact but they weren't they weren't happier. In fact, they were sadder. They were more upset. Um, so, what that means is, let me hold this on this side. What that means is, uh, money has little to nothing to do with how happy you are. Which means the what, and it doesn't even matter what they were doing. I mean, some of these, like the, like I said, the, the what is, is, has very little effect on it. So, um, what I would say is, and what I'm kind of getting at here is, I think one of the most important things you can do in your life is learn how to distinguish from, distinguish the what and the how, right? You can you can do anything well, you can and, and, and you can do anything with passion and with pride. That's what that's the kind of the point of uh, Seth Godin's book. And if you know why, you're do if you know what you're what you're trying to do in life. Everything else is just, it's just like, it's just how to get to that goal, okay? So what I would, what I'd suggest is spend time, um, this is what I'm trying to do now, and this is what I think that everyone should do, is just spend time trying to discover why, um, like what they want out of life and why, and then just go after that and let the what just be sort of something that happens and make sure that the how the how is in line with uh, with what you want out of life. So, anyway, it's episode one. We'll see if it actually airs. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed this, and hopefully you're not sick after this, the me walking. And hopefully I'm not too winded after me walking and trying to talk at the same time. Peace.